Okay, let's touch base uh, with our special guest this morning. Uh, we have Gautam Sinha Roy, fund manager Motira Roswal, asset management company, joining in with his views on the markets. Uh, Gautam, it's great to have you in the show. Thanks very much for stopping by. What a year it's been. Uh, the only question now is, it can uh, we do an encore of the returns delivered this year with 2018? Because as one goes higher, it gets a bit harder. That's true, because you know we are exiting at very high valuations. So next year will be largely about earnings catching up. So uh, earnings growth will determine uh, returns to a large extent. Valuations have room to correct, I believe. Racing yourself for a correction next year? So as we exit, you know, PEs are at some 27x. From a valuation perspective, yes. But I think earnings growth should return. So that should help the market overall. Yeah, I, I, I want you to elaborate on that a bit more, uh, Gotham. Uh, you know, so the premise for this runaway rally has been that earnings will catch up. Uh, if we do about 10% off this year, what does that set stage for market expectations on earnings for the coming year? I think around 20% is definitely being uh, built in for next year. So if that is delivered, then markets should uh, largely remain flat or thereabouts. But you know, there is room for P correction, Nifty 500 at 27x uh, this year is uh, probably at all time high valuation. So from valuation perspective, P D dating perspective, I think uh, there is scope for the, the P's to come down. And next year would of course be a year of earnings also catching up. So it will be a fight between earnings catching up and valuations contracting. So let's see how the year ends, but it will be a very interesting year given that you know valuations are high, but at the same time we're expecting earnings to rebound. Gautam, hi. Uh, 2017 has been a year wherein DIIs are the ones which have really led the markets. Is there any reason to believe that the DII participation could be challenged in 2018? Uh, could there be a revival of any other asset class that one could see? Or would you think that 2018 also equities are going to rule? I think, uh, you know, DIS will continue to come in and uh, uh, the retail money is coming in because of lack of options and also because past returns have been good. But if there is some correction, then we should expect FIs also to come in, you know, later on, if there is some correction in the market, uh, because they are much more valuation conscious for sure. So, Gautam, what according to you would be the texture of the market going forward? Because of late, you are seeing a sectoral churn take place and that sectoral churn is happening at a very escalated, almost a 10-day interval. Um, in the more near term though, where do you see a stronger earnings revival take place and where do you think the market is going to find favour in terms of a sector move? I think the rural part of the economy rural demand as well as productivity enhancement uh, areas, uh, most of rural demand because that's a very large place, will be a very interesting place to look out for because we have a low base there, we're getting into election season and there would be some incentives hopefully in the budget. So uh, from a revival perspective, that will be interesting. Uh, the steel side has been reviving, so hopefully that continues. Of course, the corporate and PSU banks, you know, because uh, now we are finally getting into the NCLT resolution mode that would be a large area where you know from an earnings share index earnings perspective the delta could be enormous if the nclt resolutions work out um, um, you know some transfer of ownership of assets uh, happens next year uh, so uh, from a creating delta in index earnings uh, that'll be important because you know if you look at last three four years uh, uh, at the individual stock levels earnings growth has been stupendous in select pockets of the economy but the index earnings is what has suffered. We have not seen index earnings grow. And that's largely because the large weights in indexes you know, from uh, sectors like PSU banks, even industrials or I'd say telcos too, which have not grown in earnings or degrown in earnings. So these are the sectors where uh, revival is being hoped for too. The market is building in revival in earnings in telcos too. It's building in revival in earnings to some extent in corporate and PSU banks. So if that story pans out, then we will have a, a decent buildup in uh, index earnings. And that's what I mean when I say that, you know, next year will be a year of uh, earnings building out, earnings uh, picking up 
and at the same time P's do have room to connect. So let's see how the interplay between the two works out to be. Yes, your banks, would you stick to the larger uh, ones or would you say this is going to be an across the sector move that we are bound to see? See, from an earnings perspective, it will be actually be the reverse because the ones that are more beaten down should revive more. So, you know, if you look at the PNL of PSU banks, still the pre-provisioning profit level, I don't think there is too much of delta change happening. But below pre-provisioning uh, profits, which is essentially the provisioning part, is where the major delta is going to happen. And, uh, you know, that should reflect in higher earnings growth or change in earnings for stocks where the provisioning numbers have been very high. So essentially the smaller ones which are very beaten down. But this is largely, you have to remember that this is largely a one year adjustment or a trade from market perspective. This is not a structural story as of now. Uh, the structural story builds out only when the private sector capex revives. Uh, so that's another thing to watch out for actually next year. So if private sector capex also starts reviving towards the second half of next year, then and only then we'll see a much more structural story evolving in uh, these PSU banks and corporate banks. Uh, so, uh, you know, given your uh, broad assumptions on uh, how uh, the rural economy will also contribute to growth into the coming year, where are you betting on, aside of the, you know, financial exposure to uh, delinquencies being uh, resolved and, you know, that side of the market kicking in, uh, on the consumption side, what are your hopes? So essentially, you know, we are, uh, so our style of investing is of course very different. So we, we just believe in um, buying and owning compounders, long-term compounders, structural stories more so. So, you know, for, for us, nothing much is changing. We are uh, very optimistic about the earnings growth prospects of the stocks we hold and uh, they largely being in the retail financial space, both on the, uh, you know, private uh, lending space as well as the financialization of savings. Uh, bit. So like insurance is a large holding for us. So I believe that that part of the story is very, very structural, secular, and that will continue to play out. Beyond that, select auto names will continue to do well, probably not as well in earnings as they have done past three years, but still a very decent compounding in the earnings is expected. So we continue to own them. So some of the, uh, the stocks that we hold and on the consumption side also, we have a fair mix of staples as well as discretionary consumption names. So some of the stocks that we own definitely uh, benefit from, from the rural uh, uh, you know, demand pickup or general consumption demand pickup. The other thing uh, is private sector capex revival. I think private sector capex revival will be greatly beneficial for the overall economy. You know, not, not just for the corporate banks, which have the first derivative impact and they are benefited the most from a stock perspective, but it will be good for the entire economy from a growth perspective, from job creation, demand creation perspective. So that's something as a theme which will be very optimistic for, for any, any, any India portfolio manager. Gautam, as I look at your uh, dynamic equity fund, or for that matter, multi-cap 35, uh, there's only Maruti Suzuki, which is in the top uh, uh, slot over there, in the top five to ten names that you hold in the declared portfolio. Uh, you think that it's reason to perhaps uh, uh, relook at Maruti and maybe then replace it with an M&M, or for that matter, Tata Motors. M&M, because it's bound to also benefit from this rural recovery, and Tata Motors, because, you know, there is a slew of launch now which are launched up uh, mm -hmm. the stock has been an underperformer you know there's a high beta and high delta that you can play for in Tara Motors and therefore a uh, significant headroom and a scope for more of that yeah so you know the, the interesting bit there is uh, the way the car industry in India has evolved into being a largely a single uh, player dominated industry just like the airline industry is so hardly, if you look at the industry profit pool, uh, you know, the share of uh, the one uh, one guy is so high, it's humongous. And the uh, economic moat uh, that uh, this player enjoys is only increasing uh, with the slew of new launches. So while there are always hopes around other players catching up, but, uh, but from our perspective, we believe that the economic moat uh, is very important and uh, the growth prospects are important. Growth, you know, overall growth we should be bullish on because if we are talking about consumption revival, then definitely all these players benefit. 
probably the players who have been more beaten down benefit more. But that tends to be a short term play, you know. But if you see the structural story, uh, it's just not about growth, it's also about the economic mode that these companies enjoy. And these are the companies which will typically do well across cycles, be it the down cycle, up cycle. So that is what we are more interested in being long term investors. So. Uh, we are staying put with our um, you know stance in autos for now but yeah of course we'll keep evaluating and if we find more interesting companies to own in the auto space more the merrier uh, what about um, you know uh, the the investment um, cycle and related themes particularly the revival in the mhcv seg uh, segment so to speak uh, are you betting big on that uh, there select options even so but do you think that that's a theme that will filter down uh, to looking at some of the investment related stories? Yeah. So investment related, uh, investment cycle KPEC uh, revival is uh, actually a, some, a theme with to watch out for. It's not happening yet. And even if you look at the latest IIP prints and all, uh, it's not happening. It's happening at the margin in sectors like steel. But a broad based economy level investment cycle revival has not happened yet. So that's the first point. The second point is, you know, on MHCVs and all, uh, the fact that, um, you know, there will be a shift from road to rail in terms of the freight mix. And uh, that that is uh, going to happen very soon with the DFCC uh, getting operated. So I think um, uh, that 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 is the theme which will play out in a big way and it will impact uh, MHCV growth. So uh, not even if there is a strong revival in investment, uh, sorry, private sector CAPEX or let's say in mining, which tends to impact uh, positively your MHCV cycle. But again, we have uh, another factor, a, a countervailing factor, which is essentially the shift from uh, road to rail because of DFCC coming in. So it will be interplay of two, so net-net uh, not very positive on the MHCV cycle from a three-year perspective. And finally, um, uh, Gautam, uh you know, as we wind up this interview, uh, do you get this? I know you've said that it's going to be harder as we uh, move higher on the market. But even so, do you think that the optimism that's been fueling the markets will continue? Uh, you know, as a fund manager, do you think that the opportunities, uh, while would, uh, would be few and far between as we go up, uh, there would still be ample room for an outperformance? You know, the outperformance is definitely, uh, you know, a very different game. But uh, from, a, from a share market perspective, what worries me is when I look at many of these mid-cap stocks today, you know, most of them are trading at very rich valuations. Uh, you know, let's say two standard deviations above the long-term average, buying at 50 times uh, current PE is very normal. So when you're buying expensive stocks, it becomes very important to be all the more sanguine about future growth. So that's what I'm saying, you know, so you know, while, while future growth is there in select stocks, uh, but you have to be selective, you have to choose correctly which stocks you're owning. You cannot be very generic, you cannot uh, spread yourself uh, uh, too thinly across many stocks, hoping that there will be growth. Uh, so this will, this will be a, this will be an interesting phase, I would say, from a stock selection perspective. And when the tide does go out, tide, I mean, the valuation P ratio is being very high, that comes down or normalizes, which has to happen. It's a cyclical thing. Then, uh, you know, the stocks where earnings growth has been good enough to compensate for the PED rating, they will stand out. So this is, this is a, definitely a very interesting market to look for stocks. And you have to be very right about your earnings growth uh, to get your stocks right. Great speaking with you and here's wishing you and your entire team a happy new year from all of us.